Devil's Pit Historic Mine Train, with stops at Hillside Station and the Superstition Caverns. Please keep your hands and arms inside the train at all times, and remain seated until the train comes to a full and complete stop. Failing to comply with safety regulations can result in severe injury or death. Enjoy your ride, and please, no flash responses. Before it became the charming resort town that we know and love today, Simon Hill was once the center of trade and commerce, thanks to its rich scenes of coal and iron ore. You are riding aboard a fully restored... Silent Hill Downpour is a third-person psychological horror game and follows Murphy Pendleton, an escaped convict, who finds himself trapped in Silent Hill after his prison bus crashes. This subterranean railroad was built in order to haul men and Atmosphere. Silent Hill Downpour is a major departure from many of the staples of the series on an aesthetic level. The overwhelming fog doesn't feel like it's going to envelop the player, the noise filter has been removed and the other world is much less impactful. The music feels more toned back and without the original composer at the helm for the soundtrack, the melancholy sadness of the streets is gone. Overall, it feels like the town itself is more lifeless. It doesn't feel like an entity in itself like the previous entries in the series. In this game, Silent Hill is just a place, a long abandoned town where a few deranged stragglers hang on in the derelict and sometimes destroyed buildings. There's no surreal menace to the place, it's not dreamlike or unnatural, and with the lack of music in many areas, it somehow doesn't even feel eerie, just empty. Other areas like the mines are vaguely creepy, but it never really gets going or utilises it, constantly slowing down the game to do puzzles or fight enemies. Something that's odd about Downpour is that the game is just incredibly dark, even at maximum brightness some areas were just pitch black, however this could just be the fact that I played the game on the Xbox One. The extreme darkness almost builds some tension when exploring basements and unlit areas until you get a torch. The other world has an odd set of design choices and whilst it's supposed to be different for each person who enters Silent Hill, Murphy's one is heavy on design but lacking on feel, with great cogs and machine parts wearing around the place. It feels grandiose and yet still not menacing or surreal. It's nice to see that there was some symbolism put into it with the water being featured a lot and tied heavily to Murphy's past, but it feels lacking despite having some visually impressive areas. The game tried to incorporate fixed camera angles in some sections, but this kind of fell flat and didn't work very well with the control scheme. This entry is supposed to be an open world Silent Hill game, but its atmosphere isn't strong enough to support anything like that. I've said it multiple times so far, but the best word I've found to describe the feel of downpour is... empty. That's no Harry Mason's. Scares. There was only a few moments in the game where I was frightened. As mentioned before, some of the areas are incredibly dark, and my first encounter with the shadow-casting dolls was in a room so dark that their shadows were practically invisible. With only the lighter to illuminate the area, I was at a major disadvantage, with the enemy taking swings at me in the dark. This was only really frightening because I was unequipped to deal with the problem, because I decided to explore a random house. It tries some new things like having to balance yourself walking over planks and the feature where you slowly open doors, but I was never frightened enough to be afraid of opening doors and the plank balancing was over quickly and didn't seem too difficult. The combat felt very weak, the monsters themselves didn't evoke the same revulsion as the ones in previous games and felt uninspiring, and for a large portion of the game you could just walk away from them. When they weren't very easy to defeat, they were frustratingly hard like the weeping bat enemy in the caves that pursued you endlessly and never seemed to die. The only time enemies were frightening was in a side mission when I got trapped in a sewer with many of them and struggled to find the exit in the dark. There were a few sporadic jump scares and only the one with the moving mannequin managed to catch me off guard in the mines. The bogeyman as an enemy is designed to be the game's pyramid head but doesn't really feel menacing even when painted as this brick house of an enemy and turns up far too infrequently causing far too little impact. 
The game also tries chase sequences with Murphy running away from some vortex, but it's not very threatening. It feels like a recreation of Silent Hill 3's haunted house section, but in Downpour it's very easy to get through, and they aren't deadly enough to be impactful. The game is quite long with many side missions and extra content that I just didn't get to see, but most of the frightening experiences seem tucked away in those side missions, with the main story being oddly devoid of scares, even up until the finale. That's still no Harry Mason's. Sound Design the sound design and music is something that's been ingrained in Silent Hill since the beginning, providing previous incarnations of the town with this overbearing sense of sadness, melancholy, and abstract horror that's both imperceivable but somehow familiar and downpour is severely lacking in this department. Despite being the biggest soundtrack in a Silent Hill game to date, there's an overwhelming amount of silence in the game. When it does pick up though, it's not impactful or emotional, it doesn't provide intensity to the combat and feels like it's just hanging in the background and never takes centre stage. It doesn't frighten or provide moments with much of anything. The most memorable pieces of music are the outdoor town loops which sound archaic and eerie, but they only seem to play at random. Throughout the game, there's radio dedications to Murphy Pendleton, and some of the music that gets dedicated is wonderful. From the slow swing tracks like Andy Williams' is Born Free, which is clearly meant to be ironic, to the some music that would have been better for the soundtrack than the actual soundtrack, fitting the themes of sadness too perfectly to be relegated to some random radio broadcasts. One thing that I did enjoy was the deep rumble that plays when you finish off an enemy. The sound gives the moment the enemy dies some real weight to it. The voice acting is pretty damn good too. Some of the delivery, especially on Anne Cunningham's character, is just really well done. Whilst there is some good stuff in there with the licensed soundtrack, the rest of it is pretty disappointing. That's still no Harry Mason's. Gore. Whilst blood isn't featured in the environment, there's a lot of gory moments, from even small things like wounds appearing on Murphy's body as he takes damage, to more dramatic stuff like him having to force his hand inside a living, moving enemy to find a key, which is pretty unpleasant. Not forgetting the opening combat tutorial which sees Murphy stabbing a man in a towel whilst blood spurts out of him, which is again, very unpleasant. Blood comes out of most enemies during combat and the wheel enemies spray blood out as an attack, yet it never feels overused because there's such a vast amount of game with none whatsoever. The gory scenes are pretty impactful and sometimes a little upsetting. That's one Harry Mason. Story. Murphy Pendleton finds himself stranded in Silent Hill after his prison bus crashes during a transfer, setting him free. The story is one of the best aspects of the game, but sometimes doesn't tie up all its loose ends, with some characters like the postman turning up and then disappearing, making you wonder if he was real or not. The story of Murphy's tragic past is represented really well through the environment of the other world, with water being a huge theme throughout the game, but sometimes it seems a bit cliche and too direct. Many hints are often dropped by random characters who seem to be more in the know than you do about Murphy's past as well. There are many flashbacks to his time in the prison, and whilst initially they don't make a lot of sense, as the game goes on they get clearer until the end where it's all laid out bare. The only thing I don't like is the multiple choices. Previous Silent Hill games made what ending you were going to get almost ambiguous until you got it. Being able to choose the obviously good thing or the obviously bad thing in clear-cut choices may let the player decide what Murphy is going to be like at the end, but it feels a weak way of going about it. Despite this, the story is very good. The symbolism isn't very clear when it comes to the enemies, but it's hard to say what everything really meant. Silent Hill Downpour leaves a lot of questions unanswered, but in a game like this, that's not always a bad thing. Making the final score 2 out of 5 Harry Masons. Even when you don't compare it to its hefty legacy, Silent Hill Downpour sort of comes up empty. 
Whilst the story they've written for the game is engaging, the basic horror elements have fallen through completely, leaving you with what feels like an empty shell of a game. Again, I'd like to remind you this whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool, I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I missed the old soundtrack, I did not scream like a banshee or run away from the computer, I advise you don't either. There'll be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.